Hello dear friends, after a short break, Mushahada Analytical Program uh, is with you again. Accommodation infrastructure also increased in Uzbekistan, the sixth um, strongest passport in the world. I think the recent Henley rankings this year came out and it was... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I felt like a little kid again in ancient history textbooks surrounded by these temples that have pharaoh drawings. It was really, really cool. We're also a really multicultural country. So in our community, you can see people and representation from a range of different countries. It could be from Central Asia. I can't see why anyone wouldn't want to travel here. They just need to know more about Uzbekistan. Hello dear friends, after a short break, Mushahada Analytical Program uh, is with you again. Our topic of today's conversation will be about the country's tourism potential and its advantages and disadvantages. For this, we invited Mr. Adma Basisaka, who has traveled to many countries in different cultures and peoples and has been a guest in our country for three weeks. Welcome to our country, uh, welcome to our program. Thanks. I'm really uh, great to see you here. Uh, and at first, can, you can introduce yourself for our observers. Uh, they should know who you are and uh, where, where you travel. So I'm Adam Abasi Saka. I'm a writer from Australia, but I'm also a commentator and I speak on a range of different issues. I'm from Sydney, which is the biggest city in Australia. Um, my father is Iranian and my mother is Italian, but I am born and I've raised, been raised in Australia my whole life. Um, I also have worked as a lawyer and I worked in management consulting, so my career is a little bit mixed, but I love to travel. Oh, great. Have you, uh, how many countries have you traveled? So I've been to 118. Uh, Uzbekistan 118? is... Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a bit crazy. Uh, Uzbekistan's my 118th. Okay. Adam, what does, uh, what does tourism and traveling uh, mean for you? So I think the most important thing is that it brings me a sense of freedom. Um, and that's freedom that I haven't had because I've either been in university or working really hard. So it gives you that sense of like being wild and you can go and explore and, you know, um, experience new things. But there's also uh, a sense of connection that I get. Uh, where I get to talk with people from their country in an informal setting and understand their stories, which for me is really important, uh, especially because I am a writer and I do work in journalism, so I very much enjoy getting to know people. A lot of people say that when you travel, you're escaping your life, so you're running away from your life. But for me, I'm actually more concerned about life running away from me. So in some way, with all this travel and experience, I get to take my life with both hands and experience as much as I want. So, and then lastly, I think it's about learning. You know, you learn so much by being in countries that you probably didn't know before you went there. So it's a really immersive experience. Um, yeah. Great. Uh, we uh, want to explore your country. We want to know about uh, more and more uh, about your country. So, uh, what is Australia's tourism culture like? And are there a lot of opportunities for Australian, Australians to travel? So, Australians love to travel. I think it's because we're from an island that's so far away from the rest of the world that, you know, the moment that you get off the island and go somewhere else you just want to explore and you go a little bit crazy and see as many countries as you can. This is my experience, I'm not sure that everyone in Australia is like this. But you know, I could be in the middle of nowhere, like recently I was in the northern mountains in Pakistan, I was in an area called Skardu which is home to K2, the second biggest mountain in the world. It's a very remote village part of Pakistan and yet when I was there, I ran into someone from Sydney, from Australia, in the middle of nowhere. And I think that that kind of speaks to the fact that a lot of Australians really like to travel. We're also a really multicultural country. So in our community, you can see people and representation from a range of different countries. It could be from Central Asia, it could be from the Middle East, Europe, America, and Asia and Southeast Asia as well. So I think when you grow up with 
a range of um, nationalities and ethnicities around you, you kind of have this seed put into your brain that, oh, I'd like to go to that country and see it once. Or, um, but obviously, you know, your ability to travel is guided by your passport strength. And Australia does have the sixth um, strongest passport in the world. I think the recent Henley rankings this year came out and it was sixth. So, you know, there is a lot of opportunity for us to travel visa free or visa on arrival, which makes things a lot easier. We're also a high performing country economically, which I think provides a lot of people with the ability to travel as well. Um, but yeah, so I think there are a lot of possibilities and opportunities for travel. Not everyone loves it as much as I do, but a lot of people in Australia love to travel overseas. Great. What do Australian tourists look for in a travel? Especially what are the most interesting for Australians? I mean, it, it really depends because it depends on people's budget and also what they're interested in. So if I speak about myself, for example, I like a destination that provides value for money, but also a sense of adventure. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know the outcome. There could be risk involved, um, but the journey of that adventure is really exciting. And then I think, of course, culture. So some, you know, Australia does, especially our indigenous culture, we have a really strong um, cultural history. But I think finding destinations that have um, a background that is very different to ours in Australia is quite interesting. Um, so I guess, yeah, th that's what I look for in a destination. What that means can be anything. It could be an island with beaches, but Australia has this, or it could be Uzbekistan, which is so culturally rich with its architecture and history, um, as well as, as its metropolitan city, Tashkent. So it really depends. Can you say which country or city have uh, you visited uh, that uh, stands, uh, stands out uh, as being very ancient and cultural for you, especially for you? So, yeah, I think the first place that comes to mind is Egypt. Um, and that's just because, pyramids. yeah, I felt like a little kid again in ancient history textbooks surrounded by these temples that have pharaoh drawings. It was really, really cool to be there. Um, and I went at a time where there wasn't a lot of tourism. So it was me in these temples alone, um, which was fascinating. But then also Iran. And I don't just say this because I am half Iranian in my blood, but um, Iran has a lot of ancient um, architecture. Uh, it's one of the first kind of civilizations of the world. So I, I definitely think that Iran's a really special place to visit. And so, you know, that makes me think about Uzbekistan because I didn't realize before coming here that Uzbek architecture, specifically in like Samarkand or Bukhara or Kiva, was built at the same time, same period, same style as Iranian architecture. I think it's around the 15th century. So it's not the oldest in the world, but it certainly makes me think of Iran in that same way. So, yeah. Where would you recommend for Uzbek people to travel, especially during in summer and spring? I mean, it, again, it really depends on people's budget because travel is a privilege and not everyone has the opportunity to be like, I'm going to spend two, three weeks and go overseas. So I think it's really important to note that travel can be anything. It can be like I've been in Tashkent for the last nearly two weeks and I can just pick a, a street with a park, a random street and park that I've never visited before. And in that moment, I feel like I'm transported somewhere else because I'd never taken that route. So I think it's sometimes just about going somewhere that inspires you that's different from where you've been before and it's within your own budget and ability so like for me personally if it's summer time i that's winter time in australia so i like to go places where it's hot and escape winter because although people don't believe it australian winter is cold um, so that could be anywhere in Europe, that could be the Caucasus countries. I've been in Central Asia for the last two months. It's beautiful in summertime. Um, but it, you don't need to go on some crazy international holiday that's so far away. You could just go to another Central Asian country and explore a different culture that you might not have been to. Um, so it just depends. 
Okay, can you uh, tell me about what you have discovered about yourself during traveling? So, there's a lot that I don't know, and I've learned that pretty much every country that I visited. So once you leave your little bubble of your home, you learn so much. Um, I also, you know, I've grown up in a really big family. I'm one of six. I've got a lot of uncles and aunties and cousins. So I've learned that my own company I kind of like because when I was, you know, growing up, I didn't have a lot of opportunity on my own because my family's so big. Um, and I guess one thing that stands out for me is that humans are humans. So I say this meaning it doesn't matter what country you're from or what passport you have or your economy or whatever. I think to our core, humans are good people and we are all just doing our best to survive. Sometimes in survival, that makes us do things that aren't necessarily the greatest, right? But I do think overall, people have good hearts and people are just doing what they can to survive in this world and to you know, protect their family. And so yeah, every country I go to, I always see the beauty in people that I connect with and I really appreciate that. Adam, what do you think? Which country uh, offers uh, qualities of, of life and for its people? It's a really interesting question. Um, obviously, I'm Australian, so I'm going to say Australia in terms of, you know, growing up, I've had opportunities that I don't know I would have had if I didn't grow up in Australia. Um, but I've been to 118 countries and just, you know, Australia's way of doing things, there's no one size fits all approach. Some countries in the Middle East I've been to or in Europe or even in Asia provide a really good quality of life for its citizens. And that's, you know, I know it sounds like I'm living out Latin America and South America and Africa. I'm not. I'm just giving a few examples. So, yeah, I, I'm obviously biased when I say Australia because I love the country that I'm from and I'm really fond of it. Um, but there are a lot of countries I've been to that provide a lot of benefits for its citizens that you know, Australia doesn't even provide too, so yeah. Uh, what do you think uh, countries are mistaken during organizing tourism policy today? I mean, I can only speak from my experience um, as a traveler and countries that I probably won't go to, um, and that's based on visa processes. So if it's really hard for me to get a visa to enter your country, I'm less likely to prioritize that country when there are lots of other countries that make it easier to arrive and be a tourist. So I think, yeah, there's visa, like how you obtain a visa, then there's how you can internally travel. So, you know, Uzbekistan, for example, I've come here as an Australian citizen. I've been able to get a visa upon arrival, which is great. You have um, infrastructure like trains and taxis and buses. So it's very easy to get around the country on your own, which is fantastic for a traveler because you want that um, independence to be able to explore the country in an affordable way. Um, and then also, you know, how free is it to take photos, document your process, speak to people while you're there? So yeah, I do think Uzbekistan, for example, does have a really good balance. I think that travel brings a lot of possibility and opportunity for countries. And I'd love to see the world embrace that rather than be closed to that. And I do think that, you know, a lot of countries in the world are open to that, so. Okay, last question for you. Uh, how can Uzbekistan become uh, one of the best destination for tourism? I mean, Uzbekistan's already doing a really good job, if I'm being honest. I'm not just saying this because I'm talking to you and this is in Uzbekistan, but there's an amazing food life. It's a very affordable country for a tourist. You can get around the country quite well. There's nightlife. You have historical architecture and an amazing culture. People here are really hospitable, warm and friendly, right? So why aren't the numbers the same as people going to Europe? or people going to America. And I really just think it's about Uzbekistan, which you probably already are doing, but continuing to spread the word about Uzbekistan travel and the reality that this is an amazing, beautiful tourist destination. Because even while I've been promoting Uzbekistan, while I've been traveling here for the last few weeks, a lot of people have messaged me being like, where's Uzbekistan? Or I didn't know about Uzbekistan. And 
I don't think that that's a great perspective. Like I've always known about Uzbekistan, but it just makes me think that there could be more work in making sure that um, the country's being marketed so that when Australians or Americans or Europeans are thinking about their list of countries that they want to go to, Uzbekistan's in the list. Because from what I've seen in the last few weeks, there is nothing here that makes Uzbekistan nothing but a beautiful tourism destination. And I've had a really lovely time. If I understand truly, really, uh, many tourists uh, come, to, come to Uzbekistan for such kind of qualities of our country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. De yeah definitely. Like, the, but it's also about who knows about Uzbekistan. So, you know, I think in Central Asia, Uzbekistan does have the biggest kind of tourism industry from what I've seen. One of the biggest. One yes. of the biggest for sure. And I'd love to see it keep on booming. And then, you know, if it does continue to boom, I'd love to see accommodation infrastructure also increase in Uzbekistan. Because at the moment you have very beautiful high-end hotels and then you have really nice guest houses. And I think that there's room there for the middle market to have more hotels or accommodation options for people that are not quite fancy fancy and not quite very budget um, because I could imagine that it it would be difficult when you have lots of tourists coming in to then book these accommodation but everything here is I've had such a good time that I can't see why anyone wouldn't want to travel here they just need to know more about Uzbekistan okay great Before we arranged this exclusive interview with Mr. Adam Abbasisaka and uh, I went for a walk together with, uh, first in Bukhara and then in, the Tash in Tashkent and during the walk uh, I made it uh, my goal to share all this experience in this field of you. you uh, the purpose of organizing today's show uh, was to get the reliable opinions of Uzbekistan our ever growing tourism potential and true tourism education for our compatriots traveling to many countries and to share with you. Welcome to our country. Thank you very much for your visit and we will end our presentation, our program. Which topics are the most interesting to you? Write in the comments and we will get answers from experts on this topic you are interested in. Always be aware of everything with Khabardor. Also.